Hi, let me know if my mic isn't working. But I want to start with a song that's been on my spirit. Is my mic working? Let's check. Should be working. Are you ready? <clears throat> Mind your business. Ha! Mind your business. Hallelujah. <laughs> Mind your business. Ho, oh, oh, ho, Mind your business. Yeah. <laughs> Mind your business. Ha. Don't worry about me. Worry about yourself. Ha. Don't worry about what I'm doing over here. Worry about yourself. Ha. <laughs> hey, YouTube world. It's me, Evelyn. Happy Friday. Happy Furahi Day. For all my Kenyan internet cousins out here, there. Happy Furahi Day. Yeah. Oh. Hey. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm live. I'm back. We're doing this weekly. This is the third live. I'm going to do four lives total randomly at random. So if you catch it, you catch it. If you don't, I apologize. You can watch the replay. play. <laughs> um, and then after the fourth live, um, I will announce a consistent day and a consistent time that you can catch me here at youtube.com slash Evelyn from the internets. Go ahead, put your bonnets on. Listen, put your, put your bonnets on. I ain't gonna judge you. I ain't gonna judge you. Helmet of salvation. I am cloaked. Because <laughs> what he said, he said, put on the armor of God. Is what he said. That's <laughs> what he said. Where did he say it? Don't know. I, I missed that one. I missed that that day. I didn't show up that day. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. I already said hi. Let's get right into it. Okay. Um, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Monique is a actress, uh, Oscar Academy Award winning actress. We'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. <laughs> is a critically acclaimed uh and and generally loved i don't know about well liked but that doesn't matter and we'll get to that later we'll get to that later thanks for the super chats y'all <laughs> um comedian actress I mean, she's up there. I, I think I had a video a couple of years ago with Jade Fox. And I think I mentioned Monique as an inspiration, a personal inspiration to me. Or maybe that was Jade that said that. One of us said that. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Some, some misunderstood world said, I saw an Asian woman in the grocery store with a bonnet. Listen, the, black women and Korean grandmas might be the same person. Might be the same person. Um, <laughs> anyway. Oh, yeah. It must not have been me if I can't remember. It was probably Jade. But anyway, I, I like Monique. I like funny women, of course. I like funny women. So anyway, uh, Monique recently went on her Instagram, on her social media, and had a message. She called it a warning, first of all the shade of it all. She got it a warning. And um, she had, a, it was a five minute video on her personal Instagram where she warned younger black women 
that if she catches us in the airport, in Walmart, you know, in Kroger's, at the gas station, I don't know all the names she, all the places she named. Um, <laughs> if she catches us in public with a bonnet on, with a scarf on, you know, looking kind of homely, she will personally tap us and say, get the bonnet off your head. In love. She says it in love, of course. But she'll say, get the bonnet off your head. That's what she said. She said she'll do that if she sees us in the streets. She will roll up on us because wearing a bonnet like this to cover and protect our hair, um, <laughs> wearing a scarf, wearing pajama pants, you know, wearing slippers is uh, for the house. It's for the home. That's why it's called house shoes. You feel me? It's your inside clothes. She can't really stand it when you when black women specifically, because that's who she's talking to as an auntie, right? She's, she's, this is heavy. This was heavy on her heart. This was, uh, it was on her spirit. It was really bothering her. She even said she hesitated. And I was like, why didn't you listen to the Holy Ghost? Why didn't you listen to the Holy Spirit when you hesitated? There was a reason you hesitated. <laughs> um, <laughs> She said it's unbecoming of us because it shows that it doesn't show. She she made sure to say it's not that we don't have pride. It's that it might come off like we don't have pride in ourselves as black women. To be out in public, to be outside with our inside clothes. <clears throat> and uh, so that's what she said. She said it. Admittedly, inside in her inside clothes, um, and she said, "You need to. We need to walk around, you know, out on the outside, <laughs> uh, and earn the title of queen, right? So that when people say queen, black queen, that it matches. You know what I'm saying? That's what she said. That I'm just, I'm just reporting back and saying what she said." I have so much to say about this and I don't even know where to begin. I have some notes, some notes. <laughs> she said it with her inside clothes on, no makeup on. She did say we don't have to have makeup on. She, she gave us the rule book at the very least. I hate when people don't give solutions, right? When they critique with no, what? Solutions, but she gave us solutions. She said, get dressed a little bit. Okay, I have so many thoughts. A bunch of different thoughts, but we'll get to them. <clears throat> Number one, I would love to see Monique tap on a Gen Z, on the shoulder of a Gen Z. Oh, Auntie can get, get her shit rocked. Respectfully, from what I understand about Gen Z. Okay, I'm just a millennial. <laughs> any any Gen Zs, any Gen Zs out there? I would love to see it. It's not happening. Gen Z's not having it. I would love to see Monique try. Somebody film it. Gen Z very much is giving me world star, very much giving me don't touch me. <laughs> okay? You're not late. You're right on time, some cool name. We just, we're just getting started. <clears throat> so that was my first thought. For some reason, my first thought, well, that was my second thought. My first thought was, mind your business. Mind your business. That was my first thought. But my second thought was, I wish she would roll up on somebody who's Gen Z. In the airport? First, then my third thought was, we're just now going outside. 
So the people that you're seeing with the bonnets on have not likely have not fully adjusted to being outside again. <laughs> Milka, Milka, she she did not mean metaphorically. She meant she will physically tap you. And say, hey, baby. What'd she say? My sweet babies. My sweet, sweet babies. What do you want? What do you want somebody to do in that scenario? What do you want somebody to do? Yes, ma'am. And dig through their carry on to change their clothes in front of you. It don't make no sense. I, I don't promote anyone getting knocked out. I'm letting, I'm just letting people know my perception of Gen Z. It's from, I, I don't want to run into no Gen Z. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to be caught in a dark alley with someone born in, in 19, LOL. I don't want to be caught in a back alley with somebody born in 2010. You were born in the year 2005? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> so that was one thing. That was the Gen Z part. <clears throat> now, she are, she's, Monique has already doubled down. She's already done the double down. She said, I don't too much care. And that's the most auntie thing ever. She's on brand. No one expects an auntie to apologize. No one, no one is asking that. I don't know who asking that. <laughs> innuendo in your window. You were born after Shrek 2 came out? <laughs> yeah, it's up and it's stuck. <laughs> oh my gosh. Y'all are hilarious. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Let's cross that off the notes. Gen Z's not gonna care. That was my bullet point. <laughs> Next point is um, the whole Queens thing. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of narrowing in, right? The basis of Monique's argument was that her statement, her warning was that, oh my gosh, thank you for the super chats, y'all. Yola M, Susan Favor, Escrow. I really appreciate Kings and queens. Her main Monique's main point was that we need to earn the title of queen. When we say, hey, queen, my black queen, we need to look like it. Okay? Now, here's my problem. Have y'all watched The Crown? Have y'all seen Queen Elizabeth with your own eyes on the television? It don't look fun. Me, myself, I'm not trying to be a queen. Who, who said that? A queen? Who said that? Who trying to be a queen? I understand from a cultural perspective, from a historical perspective, from a hashtag black pride perspective, why that sentiment exists. And there is some beauty to it. And I do understand who I am and who my what my heritage is and how that influences the things that I think and the things that I say. Hashtag it regardless. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a monarch. Who said who said being a monarch was good, was something to aspire to? Me myself personally. Of course, being besides being the king the kingdom jester, <laughs> the kingdom's podcast host. <laughs> 
I would be very much the kingdom's um, merchant. I'm trying to travel the world. Show my clothes. Show my nice clothes. <laughs> I'm not trying to look. I'm not trying to look like a queen. Queens are boring. Well, I guess in the European sense. <clears throat> I'm trying to. Be, I'm trying to be a merchant. Just imagine back in the kingdom, because we are from the same kingdom. Back in the kingdom. Oh. Evelyn, where did you get your clothes? <laughs> oh, oh, me? Oh, this? I thrifted it in India. Oh, you mad, bro? <laughs> I sailed around the continent. A humble seamstress, Nandi. I am but a merchant selling my wares. <laughs> <laughs> Sincerely, Jean, I'm trying to be the wine tapper. Listen, who trying to be a queen? The thing about being a queen is there can only be one. There can only be one. We can't all be queens. Me, I'm a merchant. Oh yeah, I went to Indonesia. I came back with with jewelry, <laughs> with silk. Oh yes. Yes, I went to Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, so the the queen thing I just had to I just had to say that part. Some of us are commoners. <laughs> exactly. Some of me myself, I'm simple. I'm common. I'm a commoner. I'm a village person. Okay? Not a queen. D Dame, not all queens are good people. I'm trying to be a humble seamstress. <laughs> the mere paupers we are. Can I have some more? That's what we're giving you. That's how we got the bonus on. Because we spent two, $250 on the braids that's underneath just to go to the Dominican Republic. We got to preserve this. Okay, we got a lot of witch doctors. We got a lot of healers in the kingdom. <laughs> Tay is a barmaid at the brothel. Listen, get in where you fit in. I'll have a whiskey Coke. <laughs> Gen Z would overthrow the monarchy with a tweet. Please. Anyway, so that's that. I had to mention that. I don't want to be a queen. Okay. And point number two or three. Don't know where we're at. <clears throat> Needing serotonin. I'm the baker. We I'm the baker. We need carbs. Yes. We thank you, sourdough. We need sourdough. We can't all be quiz. Who's going to make the bread? Who's going to make the bread, Monique? Now, another point I would like to make <laughs> is um, that this is a distinctly Black thing. But I understand that, you know, not everybody, you know what I'm saying? We not, we, I might be a mixed company and that's okay. The concept of respectability politics, while I believe the term was coined in reference specifically to black people and the experiences of black people, is something that a lot of us 
space. Respectability politics is... <laughs> Nicholas is the gay thought. Listen, we all need one. Happy Pride. Amen. <laughs> uh, who's the weed man? Okay, I gotta stop. I gotta stop looking at this. Um, respectability politics is the idea, respectability is the idea that your <laughs> that your outer presentation, um, the 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 type of person you are, is the reason why good or bad things happen to you. Right? It's let me find the actual definition because I didn't I didn't do that one justice. <laughs> I didn't do that one justice. Talk amongst yourselves. Respect to Bill Lit T. There we go. Mm hmm. Do 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 do. This is from Wikipedia, okay? The term politics of respectability was first used in the context of Black women and their efforts to distance themselves from the stereotypical and disrespected aspects of their communities. Respectability politics continues to influence the behavior of racially marginalized Black individuals today who gain status and rights by, quote, adhering to hegemonic standards of what is what it means to be respectable. Okay? That's, that's what the internet said. It's the, oh, if you just didn't sag you on pants. If you just didn't, oh my gosh, if you just... <laughs> oh my gosh, Stephanie, I shall dub me Kingdom Candy Lady. Hey, hey, hey. Um, yeah, it's the sagging pants. If you just didn't sag your pants, if you just didn't talk in your natural accent, if you, um, you know, if you changed and assimilated enough, bad things wouldn't happen to you. And Monique attempted to say that it's for self pride. That it's to show that it's to have pride in yourself, but sounded like Bill Cosby, precisely. But that's not what it ever is. Because if it's about self pride, then it doesn't matter what the outside looks like. Right? And if you want to talk about bonnets, if you want to talk about scarves and head wraps, we can go to the original head wrap, okay, history lesson, which in um, a United States, what is now called the United States context, in the Louisiana area, I don't know if it was technically Louisiana yet, or maybe Louisiana was larger than it is now. Anyway, you know, American history, I wasn't present, was that seventh grade? Um... <laughs> The Tignon. The Tignon. Someone put it in the chat. There you go, Teresa. The Tignon was a piece of fabric that by law, free, I think it was free black women in the Louisiana area at the time, whatever that those borders were, were, um, by law, they had to cover their hair to uh, identify themselves as black in a way. <laughs> um, and of course, cause black people be doing what they be doing. They were like, oh, we're not gonna have no raggedy cotton, no, you know, bland, nothing. It's gonna be colorful, it's gonna be flavorful. And that's how we have colorful uh, head wraps today. Don't know why I started going into that, but anyway. <laughs> so anyway, the thing about respectability politics, and this is the main point I'm trying to make. The thing about respectability politics 
And the idea that you have to look a certain way to say a certain thing about yourself to others is that respectability politics don't work. And um, the unfortunate thing is oftentimes the person who is enforcing or attempting to enforce the respectability politic has experienced, I said I'd talk about it, has experienced the truth of the matter, which is that it doesn't matter what you do or what you look like. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Monique has experienced the fact that it doesn't matter. A whole Academy Award. A whole Academy Award. And you're out here fighting for your checks. Did you not get the deals that you thought you deserved? because your baby hairs weren't slicked back enough? No. Was it because you didn't, were you treated poorly because you didn't have pride in yourself and in your presentation? No. It didn't matter how respectable you were or weren't. I don't know your life. It didn't matter. Specifically talking about the airports, right? Monique was talking about don't wear a bond at the airport because you look a mess and you don't want people to think you don't have pride in yourself at the airport. I don't even know how many Instagram stories I've read about moderately wealthy black women and their interactions in first class. And they're dressed to the nines. So it doesn't work. And I can understand, the thing is I understand, I, we all understand what she's saying. I, I myself feel better. I don't know the last time I've been on a plane, but when I wear real pants, <laughs> I feel better. Sometimes you need a zipper to remind you that you're alive. I get it. I get it. But what I don't agree with is the fact that that zipper that shoe, that hairstyle changes what someone thinks about me or what a, what a racist someone thinks about me. Because it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Too many rich people getting the cops caught on them because no one believes it's their house. Too many people with nice cars, whoop, whoop, thinking that you ride in dirty and it's your car. Doesn't matter. Lorraine, I encourage you to listen. Respectability politics doesn't work. It's not about the bonnet itself. It's not about the headscarf itself. It's not about, it's not, we're, no one's fighting for the right to wear their inside clothes outside and their outside clothes inside. It's because a lot of people, for some, well, not for some reason, I know the reason. A lot of people a lot of people believe that if you just if i just fix something about myself 
I will be treated with respect. And it doesn't matter. If you, I'm thinking of my mom. How many old people have called my mom the name? The N-word. And she's trying to, she's trying to take your vitals, sir. You the one, you the one knocking on heaven's door. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. That's not what makes people respect you. Anyway, I talked about respectability politics. <laughs> Cross that off the list, I think. I talked about Monique experiencing the fact that respectability politics don't work. For someone who says, and I believe her for what it's worth, for someone who has talked so open, openly about being treated so badly, you of all people should know that it don't matter what, what you do. Hold on, let me read this. Thanks for the super chat, Tracy. Tracy said, another reason politics of respectability doesn't work is anyone who's going to prejudge you is going to find a way to judge you, no matter what you look like. And in those people's minds, no matter what you do, you'll never be enough. And that's that on that. Mo, oh, shout out to Mo. Mo says, rejecting respectability politics doesn't mean not having standards. It means keeping your standards to yourself and not policing your community. Brand, brand new, new. I'm using the word politics because that's the official term, not because she said politics. I get what you're saying. I definitely get what you're saying. But I'm you. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, she was talking about self dignity, but self dignity for others. Because she literally said, I'm not saying that you don't have self pride. I'm saying it looks like you don't. Who's looking? Other people. You don't look at yourself. <laughs> you be yourself. You don't look. You get what I'm saying? So. Does Shia Davis, did I miss a part of this where Mo said we should look good for white folks? I don't know. I never said the word white people once until now. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> I, I, I recognize over time, I'll tell you what I've recognized over time. Um, I've recognized over time that, and you can disagree with me, just like Monique, don't care. Um, I've recognized over time that it's a, it's a way to protect yourself, right? Respectability politics as a phrase, as a concept, or you can call it self-dignity, whatever. What? Okay. <laughs> um, I understand where it comes from. It's a, it's a protection. It's about protection and self-preservation because you can't do anything to me you know, without my consent, like you can't disrespect me if I respect myself, right? I get it. I, I definitely get it. I'm just saying it doesn't work. You'll get disrespected anyway. That's all I'm saying. Kel's blocker, it's a trauma response. I believe so. 
I believe so. Now, me, myself, personally, I don't wear bonnets. <laughs> me, myself, personally, uh, I don't, um, I'm not going to wear a bonnet in public, but that's because I don't wear bonnets. I had to find this. I had to, like, search for it. Um, but I do wear, you know, my twists when my hair's not done. I do just wear my twists out to, like, the grocery store or something. Because that's that's how I come. That's me. I can't I can't quickly put my hair in a messy bun. It's you gonna get these silly twists while I shop for avocados. And I don't think it's because I don't have self pride. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thanks for the super chat, Allie. Allie, Allie McNally. Love that name. Thanks, Sconaful. Sconana. S.C. Nonaful. <laughs> so. And it's okay. I want I want to let everyone know that it's okay. It's okay. To think, to think what you think. It's okay to think what you think. Just know that if you try to like enforce that in any weird way, like Monique was saying she was going to do, you might get bucked at. <laughs> you might get bucked at. Thanks, ER Jan Janika25. I appreciate it. Anyway, that's um those are all the points that I had. Oh, one more point. One more point. <laughs> Marie J, you're entitled to your wrong opinion. Yes. You're entitled. <laughs> okay, I have one more point. I have one more point. Isn't it ironic? I have to, I have to like dig into my own respectability. Like I'm, I'm kind of digging in here. Isn't it ironic that Auntie Monique wants people to, wants black women to carry themselves outwardly with their clothes and with their hair with pride, but the kind of comedy she is famous for is... I mean, not holy. Is it prideful? I don't know what you would call that. Oh my gosh, Diamond Styles? Ah, oh, I'm fangirling. Thank you for the super chat. I stand. Okay, Monique, isn't it? Isn't it a little launchy? Does that ring pride? Is it a queen? Is it queenly? Is it is that is that queenly? I don't know. I am but a humble seamstress. <laughs> I am but a merchant in this African kingdom. I am not a queen. So if if we're if we are to be presentable, does that stop with the stories we tell, the jokes we make, the language we use? Where does it end? Where does it? Where does it end? I just want to know. Is it, sincerely, Jean? Is it really noble? <laughs> Hen Han. Correct me if I'm saying your name wrong. I literally don't know. <laughs> and that's the part 
that really disappointed me. It was more of a disappointment. Again, I don't care. Auntie Monique with the double down. If there's anything that auntie gonna do, it's double down. I have never known an auntie to apologize. In that way, very on brand, very predictable. No one expects growth. We would welcome it. I can grow. We all can grow. The gods reign. When you're older, you want the youth to learn from your mistakes. She didn't say that, though. I appreciate you mentioning that, because that makes a lot of sense. If she said that. She never said that. You're making a, an amazing point. Anyway. <laughs> if we're talking about being queens, how can, how can, how, how, how can we be queens? Do queens cuss on stage? I don't. Do they cuss? I don't care. I enjoy it. I watch. <laughs> anyway, that was my final point for real, for real. And cross it off the list. And cross that off. I talked about that. Cross that off. Seeing Mind Your Business. I did that. Okay. Well, that's everything. <laughs> that's everything I have. Um. <laughs> that's everything I have. I just wanted to come and talk about it just because I'm supposed to be going live. I'm like, what can I talk about with, with my cousins? We can talk about our auntie. That's what we can talk about. She talk about us. So we talk about her. It's a family. This chat is in shambles in the best way. Um, let me see. Let me see if I have any other points. <laughs> let me see if I have any other points. Dun, 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 dun. Not really. My my last request is that. Um, if you ever see me, I don't know if something happens when you turn like 45 and plus. I don't know if there's a switch that goes off. But if you ever see me acting, acting a fool, just a little bit of a, acting a little bit of an auntie fool, just let me know. Just remind me of the days. <laughs> When I wanted everyone to be flee. <laughs> Menopause hits, maybe. I mean, my mom, my mom is fine. Julia A, sometimes you just gotta let elders be eld. Sometimes you just gotta leave people where you found them. I'm sure there are things that I think and that I talk about that Maybe not, well, Gen Z, but underneath them, they're called Generation Alpha. You talk about horrified, terrified, Generation Alpha? Now we start with the, what's that, the Greek alphabet? What's that? <laughs> Who knows what they think about me? Generation Alpha. Y'all remember... You remember when I did that video um, interviewing my pregnant friend? That baby that was not born yet? She's four. She's generation alpha. Who knows? 
who knows how the ways in which I will be problematic. <laughs> who knows? She's going to say Auntie Evelyn. Respectfully. Shut up. And I'm going to be on my bonnet. Rocking back and Riding back and forth. It's okay. It's okay to uh, <laughs> to disagree. We it's, we're different. We're different. We're very much different. Monique is an auntie. I am, I guess, a niece. Um, <laughs> Angela A. Bear. It's the youth's job to see us as a problem. Amen. So Harper, <laughs> my final message. Harper, if I ever say some ridiculous stuff, if me and your mom ever say some ridiculous stuff, it's okay if you tell me to shut up. If you post it on the hologram, <laughs> the hologram social media app. And you talk talk about me. It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to double down. <laughs> I'm going to double down. But it's okay. <laughs> oh, man. You've been a lovely audience. Love the chat. Love the discussion. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. I'm going to dive into this chat after the fact and see what y'all was talking about because <laughs> it looked like it's in shambles. In the comments below, if you're watching the replay, let me know your thoughts. Um, it's okay to be loud and wrong. I might be loud and wrong. I don't think so. But I might be loud and wrong. It's okay. It's okay. I will see y'all on the internet somewhere. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>